But let's bring in Washington Examiner White House reporter Sarah Westwood. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. I, I want to get just sort of your take on this. You know, what was your reaction when you, when you first read this? Because some people were fairly surprised. Some people were fairly surprised, others weren't, because there was already this pre-existing perception right. that the primary was the entire time rigged in favor of Hillary Clinton. We had evidence around the time of the convention last year that that was the case, that the DNC had a clear preference for Clinton over Sanders when the WikiLeaks emails came out. And even at the time, those were considered bombshell revelations only because they reinforced suspicions that were already there. And I think that's the case with Brazil's revelation. It's that people suspect that this was the kind of thing that was going on behind the scenes, but we didn't have documented evidence that this is what took place. Well, and also, I, what I, I think we may not have been totally surprised, but we were surprised on maybe the source and who it was coming from. And, and I want to ask you why her perspective is so important, especially when we see the reaction. Because if you look at, and I want to put up a tweet from, from Tulsi Gabbard, and she writes, the DNC needs real reforms that empower the people and take our party back from the special interests of a powerful few. We need your help. So my question to you is, A, were you surprised for the source? But then B, you know, what does this mean for 2018? And then who's, who's going to emerge in 2020? Right. I mean, I think one it's one thing for people like President Trump or Republicans to criticize the Democratic primary process. It's entirely different for the former head of the DNC to come out and admit that the operation she ran was corrupt, that the operation she ran uh, was slanted in favor of Hillary Clinton. I mean, that is, is the source of it. it, gives it more credibility than if it comes from a Republican. There are some Democrats who think this is a healthy thing, though, for the Democrats to reflect on what went wrong in 2018, on the institutional failures that are present at the DNC. That's the only way that they can address them heading into 2018. And they don't have any clear front runner. You see the party starting to try to distance itself from Hillary Clinton, recognizing that she's unpopular. They no longer want her to speak for the party as a whole or to be their figurehead. And so they're starting that painful process of trying to distance itself from her, admit that she was a flawed candidate, admit that it was a flawed process. That way they can start the search for someone who will represent them in 2020. Well, that sort of leads me to my next question is, is who will emerge? You know, we see sort of the progressive voices, the Elizabeth Warren, we just listened to that. Um, we, we've heard Bernie Sanders react to it as well. I mean, I'm sort of curious as who's going to be the front runner and who comes out on top. And does that behoove the party? Is that what's best for the party? Well, before Democrats can even really have a conversation about who specifically is going to represent them, they sort of have to pick a lane because you do have this progressive wing of the party that's very aggressive but concentrated more on the coast that's appealing to a lot of voters. That's energizing them. The resistance uh, is creating a lot of activism within the party. But at the same time, there is a recognition by the Democrats that they do have to moderate their tone and maybe rethink some of their very strict stances on polarizing issues like universal health care or abortion to try to make up for where they've lost in the middle of America. And those voices are sometimes right. getting drowned out by the progressives. So that's a battle they have to work out before they can start to decide on who they want to be their standard bearer. Yeah, you could say, I guess it would be fair to say that maybe both parties are pretty fractured right now. So we will see as they, as they head into 2018 if there's some clear voices that come out. Sarah Westwood, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.